All right, it's nine o'clock. Let's stand and get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a new day. We thank you for a nice uh, three-day weekend provided to us by the county. We uh, pray for this meeting now that you would bring us together uh, with thoughtful consideration on each and every item. We just uh, turn this meeting over to you. We pray, Lord, for our first responders and for all of our servicemen and women. Uh, after we've just celebrated this holiday weekend, uh, we're just reminded how valuable they are to us, Lord. We uh, continue to pray for the county, for our citizens. We, thank, we are thankful for those that support the operations of the county, and we pray that in turn we would be responsible. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Come backwards. All right, good morning. And for the record, today is our uh, first uh, not our first meeting. Today is the 14th day of November 2022. This would be, I would call, our first regular meeting of the month. It's just after 9 a.m. We'll start with item number one, which is public comment time. This is opportunity for requests for information on any non-agenda items. If there is anyone that would like to address the court now, or you may uh, speak during one of the agenda items. All right, I will move on. We've got a couple of a sets of minutes. First from October the 24th was our last regular meeting of the month of October. We'll consider that one as item number two first. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve October 24, 2022 minutes by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number three, consider and possibly approve minutes from our November 2nd, 2022 meeting. That was our first meeting of the month of November. It was a special called meeting to discuss fire protection uh, issues. Make a motion to approve the minutes. The motion to approve that said is also made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. And seconded by Commissioner Park by Commissioner Parker. All in favor of approval of that set of minutes, say aye. aye. Item number four uh, is a request that has come to me from the Rotary Club, uh, and they would like uh, a proclamation from the Commissioner's Court regarding the fact that they are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Rotary Club. And so I would like to read this proclamation uh, to you, uh, learn a little bit about the Rotary Club. Whereas the Rotary Club of Mount Pleasant, the oldest civic club in the county, was founded on January 1st, 1922. Whereas in the decades since then, the club and its Rotarians have been committed to serving our community, our nation, and the world. And the foundation of the club's activity is its five avenues of service club, vocational, community, international, and youth service. And since its inception, the club has helped young residents thrive through its support of literary activities and other youth programs. And the club and its foundation annually distribute financial grants to local organizations serving the health, humanitarian, and educational needs of the community including Rotary International's partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to eradicate polio worldwide, and while demonstrating its belief in the Rotary International motto of service above self, the club and its foundation have provided innumerable other service projects that have benefited our community. And whereas the County of Titus and our residents are grateful for the Rotary Club of Mount Pleasant's 100 years of service and thank the club and its Rotarians for their compassionate role in building a stronger community. Now therefore, I, Brian Lee, Judge of Titus County, hereby do proclaim November 15th, 2022, the Rotary Club of Mount Pleasant 100th Anniversary Day in this county of Titus. 
So that's a nice uh, recognition that uh, I had no idea that that club had been around for 100 years. I don't guess any of us were around back then. No? Feel like 100 years. So if you know any Rotarians or if any of you all are Rotarians, congratulations to you or to them. So if you would consider this and uh, approve this proclamation so that I might sign it and provide it to the club. Make a motion we approve. Motion is made by Commissioner Parchman. Second. And second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. <clears throat> you to get signed later on. Item number five, report from commissioners regarding road work. I'll start with Commissioner Parker. Uh, we spent three days last week working on guardrails down on uh, County, eight, uh, County Road 4875 uh, where Swepco Lake from the power plant backs up across that road. Been there for many a year and <clears throat> bunch of the post had rotted off and it just started falling over so we've been down there working on that like just a little bit being through it's it's pretty long it's got both sides of the road and it's probably about 200 yards long so we've been working on that trying to get that back up and going uh, and just doing some patching and and picking up trees mostly okay good deal right. we put another coat of seal coat on uh, county road 34 25 last well, week four last and then uh, and we've been gathering up a lot of trees that are blowed down in fact we, this morning we're picking one up this morning precinct two has been uh, we've had to put in a few culverts for uh, some of the driveways in precinct two we've been cleaning ditches and getting a lot of the dead limbs and trees and leaves out opening up the flow we did a lot of patching and uh, <coughs> trees in general cutting some trees down that's it uh, we've been cutting trees, uh, doing a little bit of patching. We finished up our second round of mowing. Uh, still side cutting. We just got a little bit left to do on it. Our side cutters broke down. Uh, we scabbed uh, the uh, Bridges Chapel Cemetery, uh, helped uh, Precinct 3 seal coat, and we're getting ready to redo County Road 1635, re replacing culverts on that road. Very good. Thank you very much. Item number six, consider and possibly approve a final plat on the Oak Lakes Estates subdivision. Uh, this uh, is located in Commissioner Parchman's subdivision. And we had, uh, back a couple of meetings ago, I believe, we had, in theory, approved what was requested on this Oak Lakes subdivision. But unfortunately, I, I went ahead and put this on the agenda, and there, they have something else that still needs to be done on that final plat so I'm going to ask that you uh, table this until at least the next meeting when they have a chance to get that uh, final plat completely done to their satisfaction make a motion we table it motion by Commissioner Parchman for tabling second second Commissioner Fitch all in favor say aye aye, aye. Item number seven, discuss having two more names added to the Fallen Hero Memorial with possible action. This is the uh, monument that is right out here on the east side, right by the entry uh, steps. And we unfortunately have a couple of additional names to add. Commissioner Fitch was uh, primary in uh, getting some prices put together that were um, you know, a, a, what I consider to be a very good rate, uh, smaller than what was initially brought to us by one of our volunteer firefighters. Commissioner Fitch, any comments that you've got on, on this? I'll just, uh, I'd like to give Justin Hargrove uh, accolades for doing all this. He's the one that brought it to our attention. And uh, he did some homework trying to get some prices together. And uh, we're going to get it took care of. It's going to look good. And this will, uh, again, be on the back side of this memorial that's facing this way. And our two names that we're going to add, uh, Brother Vandiver, and I just had it on my tip of my tongue, 
Ross Estabrooks. Esta Brooks. Esta. I couldn't remember Ross's first name, and I still have a hard time pronouncing his last name. So again, it's unfortunate that we have the need to do this, but nonetheless, that is what that memorial exists for. And again, we appreciate uh, Justin Hargrove for bringing that to our attention and providing us with that opportunity, <coughs> and to Commissioner Fitch for uh, using his connections to get uh, to get that done at a very affordable price. And I would suggest that uh, as part of this action, that I think that was what was the, the cost? Three hundred. It's going to be three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. About six lines. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that as part of this item that the action be that we approve the addition of these two names and for the county to pick up the cost of the addition of these two names. Make that motion. Motion is made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All right, so I'll turn you loose with that and uh, hopefully they can get to that soon. Yeah. Item number eight consider and possibly approve the Nortex Volunteer Fire Department's sale of a 1998 brush truck with the proceeds to be applied toward the cost to outfit their new brush truck. I thought it was important that we put this on here and, and be sure that we don't set a precedent that we don't think is appropriate. But here we have a situation where we have the rising costs of buying uh, new and even used equipment, and it's Nortex's turn to get uh, a new brush truck. We've already approved their ability to do that. We've got a limit there as far as how much they can spend, but we do know that there's always costs uh, to equip those and to outfit those trucks, and it's going to be higher than was budgeted for, um, and in order to help them out, they do have this 24-year-old mm, brush truck that they could sell, and if we will allow them to do that, they can use the proceeds from the sale of that brush truck uh, to help out with the cost and outfitting this new brush truck. Anybody have any more information on that, that than I've given here that we need to know? Uh, I, the only thing I've got is they approached me last week about, about this. They said that with it being higher than what we had approved and, and uh, getting the truck outfitted and all. And this truck was uh, the age it is that they thought that, that uh, we might consider letting them sell it and put putting the money uh, back on that that uh, the new truck to outfit it, get it outfitted and, and everything. Is there is there any need to, that you can think of as to another department or the county wanting this 1998 24-year-old brush truck that we're considering allowing them to sell? Not to my knowledge. Okay. This. All right. I, I would. I talked to Jimmy about this the other day, and uh, you know, with all due respect to all the volunteer fire departments, originally this was designed for all the trucks that were bought to go back to the to each, each precinct. I don't I don't really think this is something we need to start doing because we do for one, we gotta do for all on this right here. So I would be more than willing to loan the money to the volunteer fire department so they can finish that truck and they can uh, pay us back in payments uh, interest free. I think that would be the best way to do it and uh, let the truck go to one of the precincts. Uh, I mean, I could find a place to use it somewhere. I'm sure all of us could okay. down the line. So yeah, I just, I, that's the way I feel about it. And I mean, with all due respect to Brad and all of those. Well, uh, you know, uh, I don't mind, you know, if we have to up the cost of the truck because I know the trucks are higher. But uh, Argo, Cookville, and uh, uh, Sugar Hill, when they uh, had a chance to do this, we denied them because we knew the trucks needed to come back to the county. And we let Sugar Hill, and Argo didn't have to borrow the money. Sugar Hill borrowed the money from us when they had to fix their building. And like Jeff said, if we start, you know, do for one, we gotta do it for all. And it's, you know, they, we made them have payments, Cookville and uh, Sugar Hill, you know. 
what's the value? I mean, anybody have a ballpark of this? And, and maybe Brad's going to add something to that. But do you have any idea what something like this is worth? Uh, I really don't. With this, with this, I mean, this economy, I don't know. If you look on uh, where traders in this, the trucks are, you know, older trucks, even 10000 or more, you know. Is, are we going to be able to buy the basic truck for the amount that we had budgeted, which was already a substantial no. increase? Was it $1,000 no. more? No. Was it $1,000 more? Uh, it's about $1,900 more than what was originally voted on. 1876, I believe, was the difference. <clears throat> And that's just primary. that's just to purchase the truck that's from, just right, to purchase from the, the truck and dealership. Nothing. Now this truck we're we're talking about here, I don't believe was bought by the county because we've already given the truck that we're replacing to Commissioner Parchman uh, several months ago. This truck started off in Winfield and has been to Talco, has been to Sugar Hill, has been to maybe a couple other departments before it got to us. Uh, it's the one that we replaced. We got it from Sugar Hill and they didn't need it anymore because ours was having some mechanical issues and Commissioner Parchman had already taken that truck. So this would be another truck in addition to that one that it's, it's time to be replaced. It started off as a county purchase 22 years ago, 24 uh, I, years I, I, ago. I can't confirm if it was purchased by the county, if it was purchased by the Winfield Fire Department. We can't find any record on the purchase of it right now. Okay. So, but like I said, it's already been all the way around the county at least once on the on this truck. What could it be sold for? That I don't know. I haven't checked in. Fall part. I've seen them, kind of like Commissioner Hypot was talking. I've seen them anywhere from five thousand to ten thousand dollars on online right now. A but, low, a low end of five thousand. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's Depending, I mean, it's, I cannot remember uh, how many miles is on the truck. I don't don't remember. Uh, Commissioner Parker asked earlier, and I don't remember what's on it now, but it's not real high miles, so I think we'll get, it could bring the upper value on the truck. Commissioner, does anybody think that there might be a use? You said you thought there might be a use for this truck in your precinct, or, and I understand the logic you're going through, I respect that, I'm glad we've had the, the uh, conversation on this, but when it's all said and done, regardless of where that value goes, whether it's the va value as a as a usable truck or whether it's value as sales proceeds um, you know that I guess that's what's the heart of the discussion but do you feel like there might be a use in one of the precincts for that actual truck without selling it uh, well yeah we can make a fuel truck out of or a haul truck we have a flatbed available right now that we could put on a truck and, and, that, and I'm not saying I don't want to help them I'd, I'd rather give them a loan than do it that way if it was I think, I think that's going to be the best way in my opinion. Well, and that's why it's critical we discuss stuff like yes. this whenever it comes up, because once you do one, you're, right. you're, you're almost locked in to have making that same decision, or it's a difficult one if you're not going to be consistent year after year. And so I, I, I understand that. Well, we know uh, Argo, we had we give them uh, up the price of the trucks. The trucks are just outrageous, and, you know. That, uh, now this truck does have a bed on it already because I can't find just a cabin chassis anywhere. I mean, this one's got a bed on it. They're making some adjustments to it. It's 550. It's a Chevy 3500. Oh. Um, we've looked everywhere for for the trucks. So and, that's uh, part of the reason why the price oh, is higher. Part of the reason is it is a little higher is because of a bed. But even the ones I'm finding. Well, they're not available every time you call one of them. You find they're still fifty-seven, fifty-eight thousand dollars just for cabin chassis if you stay with the Ford. Um, what's what's the amount that we had budgeted, and what's the amount that you've got a price? Uh, Fifty-five thousand is what was budgeted, and the total price is fifty-six thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Okay. Is it fair to think that difference might be the fact that it's got a bed on it, or is the bed not? Everywhere's that? been about the same same price. They've actually come down on the truck quite a bit. Okay. They're, they're, the dealership uh, we've been talking to has come down a lot on the price of the truck from where it started at. We got them down to that 50, 56. So that's, you're getting a truck if we were to somehow figure out a way to pay for that extra amount that's already, uh, yes, you've already got a bed. Getting all the, the money to get the lights changed over. Uh, some toolboxes on that bed because there's nothing 
it's just plain flat bed on the truck. There's no boxes or anything on it. So, okay. it's, are there any other extenuating circumstances that would refute some of these comments that we've got here that we maybe we better not do that? I don't believe so, no, sir. Okay. Right. I think it's a small price to pay. I think we helped Trilex when they got that brush slash rescue truck. Didn't they trade a truck in on that because that truck was so more expensive than they were getting with their something to do with that grant they got? I think with the age of the truck, I'd be willing to just let them sell it for parts, use it for the new truck. Well, but if it's worth 5000 but possibly more, that's better than a parts truck. Maybe the bed and all that. I don't know. 25 years old, I'm just I'm thinking it's not like it's a new truck that we'll get a lot of use out of myself. I would I tell you I take these issues uh, as they come. I don't want, every one of them's different what their needs are with these volunteer fire departments, so I'm for letting them sell it to fix we the truck. We have given up. back two trucks now from Nortex. Both trucks that have been purchased by the county, we've actually turned back in to the county. Uh, Commissioner Parker got the first one, and Commissioner Parchman got the second one. Like so this one here, I can't confirm or deny that it was purchased by the county or who it was purchased by. But it was a hand-me-down that we got to get us out of a bind when the other one started having mechanical issues. Well, I think, if I'm not mistaken, too, uh, they used to, some of the other, other departments used to, to take those trucks and, and do that with them, sell them or whatever, uh, until I started, I got that first one from, from Nortex there right after I went into office. And, uh, but before that, there really wasn't any stipulation that it come back to the county we, or anything else. We did start it. I'm, when Jimmy asked us, I'm the one that started giving the trucks back. Up until that point, we had sold them or done whatever. I know when I was in Cookville, we sold one. Trilex had sold one to a neighboring community department that needed one. So we started that just a few years ago and actually returning the trucks back in because they're titled to the each individual volunteer fire department as it stands right now. Okay. Well, I guess the question is, do we want to continue that pattern that you got started? Uh, I think we ought to be able to figure out a way where we can uh, assist with the adjustment maybe of this purchase price, but, but I kind of like your idea about well, let's don't just assume that every time this happens we can because we don't know what the future value of these trade-ins are going to be if they're going to be traded back in if they're going to be sold if, the, if we allow them to keep that uh, keep that amount of money but uh, maybe you'd consider uh, helping them with this nineteen hundred and fifty dollar differential uh, without giving them the entire truck i think there's a lot of options you've got here just a matter of what what do you all want to do I don't think we're trying to play favorites, or I don't think that there's an argument about, you know, whose precinct is most deserving, but maybe that's a good policy to continue to trade, turn these trucks back in as they come in. This one may be a little bit different of a scenario. So I'm hearing several different opinions. I guess we need to arrive at a decision. I make a motion we uh, we keep the truck and uh, loan them the money that they need to finish out their their truck that they have. Which would be the nineteen hundred dollar differential plus the additional outfitting costs. What are those additional outfitting costs? Now, since you know it's going to have a bed on it, approximately what will we be talking There's about? There's about a thousand dollars worth of wiring and lighting work that will have to be done on it on top of, uh, like I said, the toolboxes, and I don't think anybody's priced the toolbox lately, but. Uh, Why don't we just table this until you get us an actual, do you have an actual summary of everything that you need on that truck? No, sir, because we're taking a lot of the parts off the other one. Okay. And we're just going to have to pay, there's a company in Paris that's going to do all this changeover for us because they can get it done a lot quicker than us trying to do it ourselves and it'll be done right instead of thinking we're doing it right. Is the truck ready to buy today? It should be by Tuesday or Wednesday, the new truck is. We've been approved for a loan to buy the truck already. So we've got all that part covered. We were just trying to come up with ways to cover some of the additional expenses for it without coming out of pocket. But we can. I mean, if it comes You down, say you've been approved for a, for a loan. A loan to purchase the truck, yes, sir. The way we've always done it in the past, the volunteer fire department got the loan. And then when we took possession of the truck is when the county turned around and 
uh, paid us for the. So it's a temp temporary loan. It's a temporary loan, yes, sir. I just believe they, it's a six month loan, is what they just to hold it. What they did just to hold the truck. I mean, okay, but you've got the administrative elements in place where you can go and yes, sir. Get borrow go, that entire amount. The truck is ready. We can go pick the truck up and take it and start having. Okay, we're not holding you up no, buying sir. the truck. All right. Well, that sounds like a reasonable suggestion to to table this and wait and get a price tag on the full amount, but with the idea that it sounds like we're going to take the truck uh, back but make uh, more than likely a low interest or no interest loan uh, to help with the cost differential and the outfitting of the truck. Okay, well I've got a motion from Commissioner Parchman. Second. Second, and let's, re let's restate that. We're going to, we're going to table this. Um, motion I guess is the that's the the basic element of this motion but we're also going to uh, be responsive and open to helping them out with a loan to finish up the the full amount over the budgeted amount as well as outfitting the truck okay all right we'll just have a motion to table this item until next meeting and hopefully by then you can come back with yes, some more firm figures well no more nobody would give us a quote on some of it until we had the truck in position for them to yeah. look at it because they're all laid out differently okay we'll, we'll get this done okay. by by year end okay motion and a second any further discussion all right all in favor of tabling this matter say aye aye, aye. All right, item number nine, consider and possibly approve an interlocal agreement for fire protection services with the city of Mount Pleasant. I've provided each of you, and I think you all were all emailed a copy of a revised, I don't know about a, a brand new, but a significant revisions that we received on Thursday from uh, city manager Ed Thatcher and you've been given each a copy of this. Uh, I was able to get a copy of this to John Coburn as well as to Ron Stutes, uh, and Ron was able to review that. And first of all, I want to recognize uh, some guys that have been working on this, Commissioner Parchman and Commissioner Applewhite, Judge-elect Cooper, I know have all met with uh, City Manager Ed Thatcher and uh, their powers of persuasion perhaps are extremely good because I think that the city has come back to us with uh, some major differences from what we first started talking about a few months ago. And I'm going to let anybody that wants to, especially Jeff and Dana, comment on this, on their opinions here. But some of the major differences, and we always have known that the uh, real friction points was the cost that it was going to be to the county uh, paying the city for uh, fire protection and the fact that we did not have the option to cancel the contract or to get out of the contract uh, if we reached a point where we thought financially we couldn't justify the annual expenditure. And so in this document we have, uh, I'll, I'll read the major components here, the dollar amount, uh, and of course right now we are in a one-year extension period from October 1st to October 1st of 2023 in the amount of $1.3 million. That, we agreed upon that before we got this revision to the interlocal agreement uh, for fire protection services. And so here's what the new payment amount paragraph says, that for fiscal years October 22 through September 23, in other words, the year that we're in right now, that same $1.3 million, the second year of that contract, which would be October 23 to September 24, $1.3 million again. Subsequent fiscal years during the term shall be agreed upon annually on or before September 15th. The city shall propose the annual payment amount due by the county in writing by July 15th. 
the county shall consider the proposed annual payment amount and respond in writing to the city by August 15th. If the county does not agree with the proposed annual payment amount, the parties shall meet to discuss possible resolution of the annual payment amount. In the event that the parties have not reached an agreement on or before September 15th, as to the annual payment amount, the annual payment amount shall default to the existing annual payment amount with a 7.5% increase. And then as before, the annual payment amount will be paid in 12 monthly installments. So this defines for you what your future uh, annual payments will be. We know it'll be 1.3 million after this first year that we are in, and then the most that it can increase would be 7.5. Now, the city will send us out a notice, okay, this is what our uh, recommendation is for the uh, upcoming year. Of course, I guess it could be in excess of 7.5%. I guess it could be less than 7.5% and the court will have the opportunity to either accept that and simply say we accept and one more year starts on that October 1st. If you say no, you know, we can't live with that much, we need to sit down at the table with you and negotiate and perhaps you're successful during that negotiation period. And if that fails, then the automatic increase goes to 7.5%. So I guess theoretically it could, in worst case, go up 7.5% uh, each year, which would, you know, which would add up quickly. The other major component that we had originally asked for, uh, or not originally asked for, we had asked for later on in the, in the negotiations was a termination without cause or for default. So you have two elements here. We've always had a termination for default, but we had asked them for the ability to give a 12-month notice and terminate this relationship. So the termination clause that has been added says, either party may terminate this agreement without cause by providing written notice of termination at least 12 months prior to the start of the next fiscal year. The parties shall fulfill, fulfill their obligations under this agreement through the date of termination unless the agreement is otherwise terminated earlier pursuant to the terms of the agreement. So here you have your one year or your 12 month uh, ability to get out if for some reason you just don't think that you can afford it, you don't think you're getting your money's worth, you've, you have a new revelation on forming a county fire department or whatever, you now have that ability to have termination without cause. Now, of course, that works both ways. They can do the same thing. Uh, on Thursday morning, I guess this came in, and after that first revision, and after I'd sent it to Ron Stutes for his review, and Ron, by the way, did say that uh, before I read this final section number 15 entitled Winding Up, these are Ron Stutz's comments. And I, I sent to Ron, Ron, we just received this. Uh, I think it looks good and gives the county the main points that were sought. Holds the cost to $1.3 million for at least two years. Any increases will be discussed annually. If both parties can't agree to an increase, an automatic seven and a half kicks in and a one-year cancellation clause. Uh, Ron was uh, very responsive and got back to me at noon on Thursday and said, uh, the agreement looks fine to me if the commissioners agree on the amounts. I know they wanted a one-year termination clause and you got that, so that's a good thing. Should I CC John Coburn on this communication? which I already had done. Now, after Ron's comments there, uh, the city did provide an additional uh, paragraph, and this perhaps was in response of uh, you guys reaching out to them. What happens with uh, 
uh, jointly purchased capital equipment. And that's something that we also are going to discuss here too because the purchase of capital equipment is no longer included in the uh, agreement itself. In other words, before the monies we were paying on an annual basis, they were responsible for making the big ticket purchases. Under this agreement, and correct me if I'm wrong, we are going to agree to share in those large capital expenditures. Is that right? So, in the, because of that, in the event of termination of this agreement, this is section number 15, the final, uh, the final section here. In the event of termination of this agreement by either party for any reason or non-renewal of this agreement by either party, the parties agree that the parties will meet to discuss the possible transfer and terms of transfer of such equipment, apparatus, machinery, or vehicles purchased as capital purchases under this agreement. The parties agree that this will involve obtaining an appraisal of the current value of all equipment, apparatus, machinery, or vehicles purchased as capital purchases under this agreement. The parties will then meet and, and discuss in good faith a division of said capital purchases and the consideration that is fair to both parties based on the capital purchases retained by the city and those transferred to the county. The parties shall document the terms of the parties' agreement as to any disposition or transfer of capital purchases in writing which shall be duly executed by the parties. So that only makes sense if there's going to be joint purchases as part of this agreement. And in the event that for some reason uh, this agreement comes to an end and we decide to uh, split this relationship once again, and you've got these joint purchases, you know, kind of like in a divorce, you know, who's going to get what? And so that's got to be worked out. And so I think that they've left that paragraph general enough where we can understand what the idea behind the dissolution would be and how it would, how you would go about it. I'll be quiet for a minute. Comments from commissioners. I think you it all up, Judge, on that. Uh, I like the fact that it's negotiable after the first two years and you have 12 months out. That was a, a big plus for us. And, uh, I think the city council has come up with a pretty good uh, contract this time, and I think we need to go with it. So it's a good deal to me. Thank you. I just appreciate everybody working together, trying to get this done on the, the, the county side, Kent, Jeff, me, and uh, everybody, and then the city, uh, uh, Tim Dale and Ed Thatcher, and I appreciate everybody getting on board. Any hesitation, reservations on this? Commissioner Parker, any comments? No, I, I, I appreciate the guys, what they, they've done meeting with the, the city and, and uh, appreciate everything that, that uh, has come out of it. I, I appreciate the city council for being willing to, to work with us and, and do what, you know, what was, I think is best for the county and the city. And as I recall, this, this takes care of the reservations that you had. It gives yes, some clarity on what the annual amount would be, and it uh, appears to be an amount that you can live with. Yes, sir. Right. Commissioner Fitch. I like it. Uh, appreciate you guys working on this. There's a lot of phone calling, a lot of meetings. Uh, the contract's real clear. I like the way it addresses everything. I like the two-year notice if we're going to share a piece of equipment budget that for two years practically so I like everything about it glad it's glad it's done it's a good good deal for the county any final comments Jeff no nope. all right so you've got the, the benefits of a, of a long-term contract you've got the benefits of a short term and that you can get out of it with the year's notice um, you understand what your maximum possible increase is each year, and hopefully you're able to negotiate uh, even less than that, and hopefully the city can afford to do it for even less than that. But I, I really want to express my appreciation to the, to the city of Mount Pleasant and to the councilman 
that worked on this, the city manager, Chief McRae. Uh, we're a long way from where what this thing looked like uh, several weeks ago. And, and I appreciate the fact that they have expressed a, a sincere uh, desire to continue to work with this. Uh, financially, I believe it's a good deal for them. I think it's a good deal for us financially. It keeps us from having to get into the fire protection business, which we all know would be a, a large uh, task to get started. So in my opinion, this is a great uh, compromise by both sides. So that said, is there anything else that you want to accomplish before you authorize me to sign this agreement? And Barbara, I haven't called on you, but I sure don't want to leave you out of this conversation. Thank you, Judge Lee. Um, I agree with what you said today. It, it is a much better contract than the first one that we have. It does have the termination clause without default. It gives us a fixed amount for two years. My only concern is that the 7.5% that seems very reasonable today as we see it because nationwide the uh, consumer price index is about a little over 8% this year. So 7.5 seems very reasonable. I just attended training last week and there were three highly sought after economists who spoke and the Fed's attempt, the reason they're increasing interest rates is to bring that inflation rate down and their goal is to get that to two to two and a half percent. So with the 10 year contract, 7.5% might be too high. Now, having said that, with what we've seen in the last two years, it could be too low. There's not any way to know. But this is a very good contract, and, and I appreciate the work that y'all have done. You've come a long ways from where we started, and, and I appreciate your time. And I, I don't know what's been discussed uh, in those meetings at the city and, and perhaps the number of additional firefighters that were projected to be added that we knew would, in, would indirectly benefit us. My assumption can only be that they're not gonna be able to add that number of firefighters uh, and, and attain that 45 head count uh, as quickly as they had originally anticipated. Uh, if they can do that, they're gonna be spending a whole lot more of their money and with a lot less reimbursement from the county. So I would just simply say that, uh, you know, we won't have the, uh, the large number of firefighters available that would benefit both city and county, especially during those situations where you've got overlapping uh, incidents and so we will have to be uh, understanding when you know things get tight and we would hope that that never occurs but we know that realistically it will so once again in a, a final question is there anything else that you feel like we need to do to this agreement before we sign off on it I make a motion we uh, allow you to uh, sign the contract with the city Motion is made by Commissioner Parker. Would you add this to that, that if necessary, we cancel the one-year extension that we're in? We'll let them decide if that's a formality that we need to go through. But otherwise, we're going to approve this, and if we need to negate that one-year extension at the same time, that we'd be willing to do that. I think that's what they do. Because he said it would start, instead of this, oh, they would do away with the contract now and just start it, the new, the new 10-year contract. Back from October. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we'll, we'll put two elements yeah. into that okay. into that motion. Do we enter into this contract with the city under these revised terms, and uh, that we cancel uh, the uh, the existing one year one extension? Year. That's fine. All right. Very good. I second that motion. Second by Commissioner Fitch. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations. That's a nice Christmas gift.
Item number 10, consider and possibly approve the county paying for <clears throat> the cost of upcoming seminars <clears throat> for our newly elected officials to include registration fees, travel, lodging, and meals. <clears throat> I think this goes without saying when the new year rolls around, but there is going to be some seminars that are starting prior to the date that <clears throat> these newly elected officials take office. And I think it's appropriate for the county to pick up the expenses to cover the cost of those registrations, travel, lodging, and meals uh, for anybody that does have an obligation to go to training prior to year end. Make a motion we approve that. Motion by Commissioner Parchman for approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Fitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item number 11, approve oral and written reports of county officials. Make a motion we approve those reports. Motion by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item number 12, consider and possibly approve the treasurer's report. Make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Applewhite. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. 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 We'll pass these two reports to you for your signature. Item number 13 is approved budget amendments. We have one of those, item 2023-04, so the fourth one since the start of the new fiscal year. This is pulling $180,508 out of general county contingency. We set up that contingency account each year so that we don't have to have a multitude of emergency uh, budget amendments that come up, we can draw down on that contingency amount. 180,508 takes a pretty good bite out of that total contingency, and it's just the second month of the year. It puts that $180,000 into the fire contract with the city of Mount Pleasant. Here's a more in-depth explanation that's been provided by Barbara. This is an increase to the fire contract with the city of Mount Pleasant with an offsetting decrease to contingency due to the approval of a one-year contract with the city of Mount Pleasant for fire protection. The prior year contracted amount paid to the city was 994,492. The current year original budget originally included an increase of $125,000, and then the one-year agreement up to $1.3 million now requires an additional $180,000, bringing the total one-year increase from last fiscal year to the fiscal year that we are in to $305,508. The general county contingency is reduced, of course, by the amount of that budget amendment. And that leaves us $245,000 in our county contingency after this $180,000. So hopefully we don't have any more big ticket items to come along. Um, but nonetheless, that is a significant increase from one year over the other, although I think you're getting along with that some long-term benefits other than just looking at this one year. So that is your one adjustment or one amendment to the budget. Make a motion we approve the amendment. Motion to approve is made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. Any comments, questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That brings us down to item number 14 to pay bills. So item 14 
sign pay orders and approve payment of current bills. Make a motion we pay our bills. Motion is made by Commissioner Parker. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Judge Yes, ma'am. Um, because it's end of fiscal year, there are a lot of those in there, so I'm asking that when you get ready to sign, check those and make sure that we get all of those signed. I think there are 11. You've already signed some of those, but you may not have signed them. I went through all of those and I just handed them the very last one. I think by now it's probably made its way through. Uh, and I'm the only one that hasn't signed off on those, and I'll take care of those immediately. All right, closing comments. Uh, mine, we're going to uh, focus on the fire protection agreement, and I think I've said all I can say. I am extremely happy. I'm extremely pleased. This was one major hurdle that I was hoping to get over before uh, my retirement. So again, thanks to Commissioner Parchman, Commissioner Applewhite, Judge-elect Cooper, who knows who else worked on this behind the scenes. I don't know, but, but you got it done, and I think this will be a great benefit to both the city and the county for years to come. Uh, that is all I have to say. Commissioner Parchman, any closing comments? I just want to say thanks again uh, to the city council for uh, really working with us on this contract. It's uh, been, been a blessing. And, uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, Commissioner Fitch. I'm excited about this contract. I'm real pleased with it. And uh, it's going to be really good going forward the next 10 years. Yeah. Thank you all for working on it, everybody. Commissioner Applewhite. I appreciate everybody involved. And uh, I just want to say congratulations to the ones that are uh, got elected last Tuesday. So I uh, hope the best for all of them. I just want to say thanks to everybody that, that was involved with this, uh, getting this done, city council and, and uh, the uh, guys here. And uh, I'm, I'm glad it's over with, glad, glad we've got it settled, and, and uh, thanks to everybody. All right. If there is nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Motion by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everyone.